Hey, everyone. Hello, hello. Are y'all seeing us? Are we live? Yes, we are live. Mimsy's Garden, Rustic Traditions, Larry. How are y'all? Hello, everyone. How are y'all? It's pretty cold in Mississippi today. It rained again. <laughs> Are and the sure temperatures dropped. We are alive. There we go. And it um, dropped really, really cold today. It did get cold today. I, I'm, I, I can deal with the cold. Again, I say this every blog because it seems like it's um, just a reoccurring issue. But the cold, I'm fine with. The rain is fine. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. Yeah. I, I didn't even know it was supposed to rain today. And, um, Hey buddy, I looked hey, out the window step. and it was so sunny hey, and beautiful. And then a big, huge cloud popped up and I was like, oh no, please go around it's us. Flooded. And it flooded. And then the sun popped out. And then it rained again. <laughs> hey, <our laughs> I was thinking, the woods. oh no. And um, yeah, it's funny because I took a picture of Aiden today. I wanted to try to post this, but I I couldn't get enough picture because of the glare. I couldn't get a good picture because of the glare in the background. But Aiden was moving. Hey, Rich. Aiden was moving hoses today and um, pulling the weight of two hoses. And because it's so muddy, he slipped and he <laughs> face planted in the ground. And he come back up to the door. And I heard him when he when he slipped because it splashed. And I turned around and I couldn't help but to kind of giggle. And I was like, "Are you okay?" He was like. Um, fine. <laughs> and I tried to get a picture because it was so um, it was so funny, and I wanted to post on there and say this is how we all feel about the rain. <laughs> but the glare in the background wasn't good. But it was kind of hilarious that he did a mudslide. <laughs> well, for us, so it was you know, I have a cart. If y'all seen our dairy cart. Instead of pulling it like a, you know, like a wagon, like you would normally pull a garden wagon, the hilt stand. I'm literally peak stand. I'm literally oh, I'm pulling sorry. it backwards, like through the mud, like a heave ho, because it's it's just, you know, you know, when you walk a path that's that just keeps on, you know, getting nastier and nastier. That's how the path is. It's absolutely nuts. So we've actually gotten to where it's just a you can tell where we walk you can tell where the cows walk you can tell where aiden walks it's you can tell terrible, there's, like water, terrible. there's like mud paths all through our property if the, but it's if, just bad weather, if the rain man. will ever stop i would be willing to say it's going to take like a week oh gosh, of yeah. nothing but sunshine and heat um and i wanted to mention this hey grammy karen to um some of y'all that are on um if you're interested in doing deep south i think we lost are we lost did y'all can y'all see us can y'all see us our computers okay. froze up but i'm not a hundred percent sure i think we're good there we go there we go it's kicking on hey do you need to turn um, the thing off yeah i do i've got the dehydrator on it's kind of loud i'll yeah. turn it off in a minute but i wanted to if for, for hey, anyone Stacey. that's um interested in deep south um hey Brett. buddy nash has messaged me and wanted me to mention on our live tonight that Hampton Inn Thanks in Cecilia. Wiggins is doing $89 night. And if y'all stay at hotels, y'all know that is a steal. But the offer ends February the 29th at midnight. The hotel manager just called him and said that they won't be able to offer the discount after that night. So if y'all want to stay at Hampton Inn in Wiggins for um, Deep South, Dan, that's Danny and Wanda gathering. Then y'all call now and get those $89 nights because that really is a steal. So I wanted to make sure everybody knew that. And I'm turning this dehydrator off. Yeah, we had, I think, some sage. What else did you have in there? I had. Gosh, I can actually hear now. It was loud. I didn't <laughs> realize how loud it was. I, ha I harvested some sage, some parsley, some oregano, and. It was four things. Rosemary. 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 Right. I got all of that out of the greenhouse today. Yay. Um, yeah, I haven't dehydrated anything in a while. So I went out there and I was like, I, this could really use cutting back. So. Hey, Stivers. How are y'all? Hey, thank you. That was um, actually a pretty, pretty good steal. Yeah, that's our family pieces, too. We, my 
our family. The white, the last. white dishes. This his, yeah. was his grandmother's. So. I just said something. I lost it when we started talking about the cabinet. Free cancellation if you call 24 hours before arrival. Okay, yeah, that's on the Hampton Inn. $89 a night. That's a steal. So if you are interested in that, like I said, just. Who's all um, going to the, the gathering? I know we're just driving in because we're not. We're not too We're not hours. far. Um, and we're super excited about that. We're going to be able to visit with Freedom hey, Homestead. Acres. And um, I think that'll be a lot of fun. So we, we've become really close from good friends of theirs. Our kids, Aiden and Parker, play good together, too. They're the same age. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. But so, it's good for me. I, you know, a lot of the gatherings, we have to travel, and it costs, like, crazy amounts of money and crazy amounts of time and farm center and all that. So it's always good that we can – We'll have to do our chores early and I'll have to milk. Not, well, I'll milk early, but we'll have to do the chores early. But. Loved your garden bed video. We use those a lot because they are so cheap. Yes, definitely. Yep. Hey, the cheaper, the better. Hey, Moorhead, how are you? Time yep. in the home says can't go to this one. Oh, oh I hate that. Hey, how's uh, how the home said? How's your uh, bees doing? Are they they blowing and going? Hey, Jeremy. Hey, fairy tale. Yeah, so we. We um, you know, if you saw our video, we, head homestead. we're cleaning our um, our beehives and our foundations. I mean, they are just bringing some pollen in. I went by there the other day, and you just see all these bees with all this yellow pollen on their legs. And so it's my good. nose knows. That's right, absolutely. Because I have sneezed and sneezed and sneezed. I actually, I'm not a personally, I'm not a medicine taker. But Sunday night, I had to break down and take some Benadryl because I was so congested from sneezing, and it made me feel better, even though I couldn't hardly get out of the bed Monday morning. Oh, wow. Um, we're Seven actually going to do... Sets. Wow, that's good. I talked to a buddy, a, a guy that we kind of... I don't know if I'd say mentor, a guy that just really just likes honey and don't really understand bees. We're going to help him. Actually, I talked to him the other day. I forgot to tell you that. So we're going to go check his... In the next few weeks, and then also we've got to split ours too. We, I've not checked our second apiary. We've got five hives, four or five hives up there. I can't remember. Ooh, it's I, think been it's, a while since I think it's four. There. We kind of left them alone. Yeah, we've winter. been more. We hadn't had a chance to really go up there too much. So we got those four that we've got checked. We're gonna try to split at least two of those. And then here we've got. I've got one hive that's just weak, still weak. It's gonna be weak, so I hey, think I'm gonna, Oregon Homestead. I think I'm gonna take some brood and some some um, some bees and see what we can do and see if we can get that one back to where it's supposed to be. If not, I'm just gonna merge it into another hive because it's just too weak. It's been weak. I don't I don't know. It's the one on the very end. You know what I'm talking about? So I don't. Look, it's, it's the been, one. It's been since like the beginning of last fall since yeah. I went up there. Those hives with you. But uh, it, it's a little bit harder really for good. me. And Colby says, hey, I'm going to go do this, 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 and this. But I have a one and a half year old. So unless somebody is tending to him, right. I can't really just run around and do whatever I want to do. So um, I do. Like today, I, I was telling you, I got some awesome harvest stuff in my, out from outside. Put that baby down. Got him down for a nap and went outside. That's when I was actually... And I actually went outside. We have upcoming video. We moved our American guinea hogs. They've never been out of their beds before. And we moved them yeah. with a bucket of feed. So we got all, we got all that on video. But I went to, because we have them, we put them under a covered barn shelter because she is having babies soon. She's I was close. expecting She's very her close. in February. Yeah, we were thinking actually. Doing probably. my counting, yeah. which we still have some days left. And I look at her today and she's. Children. She's getting there. I mean, she's getting there. I don't know if I would say within the next week. Almost, Cecilia. Almost. But anyway, so she's um she is definitely expecting and and because we have been battling so much rain and mud, I was afraid if she had her babies where they were that they were gonna drown. So we moved. Uh, we moved them. So anyway, I went out to check on them and um uh, kind of decided to do some other things. But I, I get to do that when Jenny goes to sleep. Yeah, so um, the, we had to. But the baby put, piglets is not the surprise. <laughs> we actually had the, um, the, the of course, y'all saw the American Guinea, or excuse me, the video today was, no, yesterday. The video to yesterday and tomorrow, we, of course, had, you know, the pigs work through the whole rest of the garden. They're done, so we're bringing the feeder pigs back to, we put them back into permanent fencing. So um, that helps because when it rains like it does, they, they know how to get out of our nets pretty easy. So we put them back in permanent fencing. 
we pulled a Georgian pebble out. So actually it gives a lot more room for both sets of pigs and also keeps my boar away from, you know, uh, the, the little ones that are coming in heat with my feeder. So I think it's going to do good. So let's see. Did you build the shelter as per your video said yet? The, the shelter for... We're in the process of, of building. Yeah, we are building. Things. We're actually building two shelters. Um, one is for this new new adventure, and the second one is for whatever we could put under it. <laughs> one is just to all catch y'all, I guess. What gathering are you talking about? Uh, with Dutch and Arms. No, that would be another? a cool one. It'd this cool. one, this is Deep South gathering. It's it's in down in Wiggins, Mississippi. It's South um, Mississippi. And it's from Danny and Wanda, which is, is deep, deep, south, deep south on YouTube. And uh, we're only about two and a half hours away. Mm -hmm. And um, last year we had a really good time. BW was there last year. Roots and Refuge was there last year. The Pratt Wong. family was there last year. Um, Stivers were there last year. Uh, Fairy, I think Fairy Tale Creations was there. I know Nancy's hey, Garden was there. Two Family Homestead was there last year. Alderman Gosh, Farms was so there many. last year. Uh, I know I'm probably forgetting a yeah. ton of people. Anyway, that was our first gathering ever. And we had a really great time. Um, not only getting to meet people, but they did some cool things like the question and answer, putting the um, select YouTubers, homesteaders on stage. And, and that was fun. And they did some like praise and, praise and worship stuff. They did some giveaways. All oh, that was kind of fun. Okay, yeah, I thought you were, but we didn't get to meet everybody, which is why we're super excited to get to come back this year because we kind of get to venture out more this year. So we're super excited. But um, didn't I say Hampton Inn? Hampton Inn is doing $89 nights, but you have to book your room before the 29th to yeah, get Gemini. that deal. Now, we don't. We, we will not be staying there because um, we're in driving distance. But for anybody that has a travel that's interested, check out Hampton Inn. Um, they're offering some really amazing rates. Larry Reeves, the shindig is always going to be good. We cannot yes. go this year. We actually have a talking event uh, on our garden. We have a seminar uh, that we booked. Yeah. And unfortunately, I didn't get the shindig on my calendar soon enough and then so we booked a seminar which we are excited about being able to speak and no teal hey miss patty how are you um a no teal um so we're super excited about that how we use our pigs and our chickens to teal and fertilize for us and weed for us so we're super excited about doing that seminar uh miss cecilia yes we did we have that um that shelter that shelter we're actually using our second dairy barn for the pig for right the pigs, now. So they're, yeah. they're fully covered. Yeah, we got our um, pigs from Miss Patty at Alderman Farm. That's from right. Mr. Tommy. So we moved them. That's the ones we moved, and their shelter is covered. So we're good yeah. there. Hey, Kim. Uh, yeah, now, the I other actually, two shelters have not been built yet. We're actually hoping to build them this, this week or next. Yeah. I actually went out and used like a dog fencing and bungee corded that really, really tight. Hey, Miss Darlene. Zip tied all over the bottom. Hey, we sent your soap out today, Miss Darlene. Yes, so you we should did. be receiving it in two days. All the way to Oregon. She got yeah. lavender and peppermint. And y'all, that still kind of blows me away that I'm shipping my soaps like to all kinds of states. It really, <laughs> like, I don't think I've processed that, <laughs> that yet. Because, you know, I've been making soap for several years. But to say I'm shipping my soap all over the United States, that hasn't. I haven't processed that yet, but it is very exciting. Um, so, should we spill the Rustic beans yet? It's 15 minutes in, do we spill the beans yet? Sure. Well, we're super excited. Well, we've been talking They're about They're super while. cute. They are cute. And I don't know if I want to make them food. They're I would rather food. them be. They're pet food. That make it even weird. <laughs> I would rather them be cleaner uppers. No, they're not gonna be cleaner uppers. They're gonna be food. Well, two of them, uh, two of them will not be food, but the other two will be food. We found <laughs> some beautiful sheep, and they're local, and they're hardy. Um, she actually, the lady, no the Can't the goats. lady that we're buying our sheep from, actually had goats for years and years and years. And she said, "I can't do the goats anymore." She said, "They're mischievous. They're always trying to get out. Just 
she they she had kept them for years and she said they're high maintenance they're just she so she's had sheep for the past what she say three years yes. three years and she said we love our sheep so they have had babies 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 yeah. babies Beautiful and now she is just she had they have 20 of a uh, herd of 20 and she said it's it's way more than what we want so we are trying to downsize a little bit. So we got to go out first and pick our, pick the ones that and we they're, wanted. They're native here. They've been raised here on this farm. Mm -hmm. um, so basically their, their grandmama's mamas are all native to yep. our area. So we're really glad of that. And and the, the one thing we were looking for is when we were talking about sheep, we, we didn't want a, a, a one that was used to rocks because this is not a rocky area right uh, we were looking through st croix kim or either uh katahdin um we wanted a white sheep i know that sounds crazy uh we i didn't want a color sheep i don't like i saw like three sheep. of the four are well, pure white yeah aren't they? we wanted we wanted white sheep so we we our plan was this we were going to get a, a, a ram and so then we, we, were gonna a get, white ram. we were going to get two um two ewes mm -hmm. and then we were going to get a weather or we were going to get another ram that we were going to uh, weather. The basically. weather is the one that's not. He is not all white because of the purpose we don't want. We're not. He's not part of the breeding program with the rest of them. So all the 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 two lambs and of course the little ram, they're all solid white. There's one they're that's actually so cool. Cute. He's got one little black dot right on his neck or her neck, excuse me. So they're all completely white. And then the, the like I said, the little um the little oh, uh, weather right. is absolutely gorgeous. He is beautiful. He's brown, but his goal is to just simply. Just be you a know, friend. He's going to be a friend he's to the ram, be, and then he's going to be. He uh, will actually off. get fixed before he even comes here. Actually, so. a farrier is doing it as well, doing it this week as we speak. Yeah. We actually have two that are ready to pick up. So we, we wanted, will pick them up Friday. Yes. And we wanted lambs. Uh, I know a lot of people say, why are you buying lambs? Buy sheep that you could go and have them producing. Uh, hey, that she, she wanted to sell her sheep more than she really did her lambs. Uh, but for us, we wanted we wanted them to get to know us better. Right. Um, we, and we're doing paddock rotation. So for us, we need them to come to know us. It's not that they have to be, you know, close to us. I mean, but at the same time, we need them to, to learn who we are. Right. So, so we, we think being younger We helps. felt like getting them at a small age and being able to work with them one-on-one, -on -one, that they would be more likely to um, get familiar with us, yeah. be more comfortable with us to where an older sheep is going to be more set in their ways. Does that make sense? They're, they're, they're used to their people. They're used to their environment. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, you know? And see the sheep that she so, has, they're on a 10 acre spread and she's not doing paddock rotation. She does bring them into the barn. They are very uh, used to a bucket, you know, when she feeds mm -hmm. them. But the, the whole purpose was they were a little skittish because even though they're close to her, I don't think they'd get close to us. So I think yeah. the, with us getting the lambs, getting them away from their mom, actually two are still nursing. So that's yeah. why we're waiting on them a little bit so longer. So we'll get two Friday, right, two Friday and then we'll get two in another month. That's right. Well, not a month. She said probably about three weeks. So um, once they're kind of weaned off, but they're so cute. Hey, TNS. They're hey, so Jancy. cute. Um, so that's our those. new... You know, that's our new thing. I, I I think I'm looking most forward to, like, I felt like we waited on Allie and Elsa's <laughs> baby forever. Nine months. That's funny. All um, my farms. Nine months. Oh, gosh. I feel like that is so long. Hey, but, Serenity Meadow. I mean, they only stay pregnant five months. So that means new babies. I mean, we get, and they have twins. So. Um, yeah. About two, half and half, they, they don't twin as much as goats do. Now the one, but one she of the said that they do twin. have twins pretty often too. So did she say that? Am I dreaming that? Yeah, one, one of the, the yeah, one yeah, of yeah. the one of the ones that we're getting. What what What's is a twin? A twin? Okay, that's right. Uh, but they're pretty. We're we're we have a little video of them, so we're going to share that video coming up. We actually built. Mm. Uh, we've got their paddock already built. We're actually working on two. Um, basically two two different shelters form a permanent shelter and then a, of course like a sheep shawl kind of like the justin road sheep shawl it'll look mm -hmm. a little something like that but um we'll be rotating them on that stockpile thank you, thank you. oh that's fine Nancy. uh we'll be rotating on that stockpile area that we've had for so long that we actually hadn't had an animal on yet so so we're excited about that um 
We're a little ner- I'm a little nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> we're so used to cow and, and bees and pigs and, and chickens. That's all stuff we know. Um, I think it's just something new. It's kind it's, of scares us. And uh, they're, you know, def- sheep are kind of defenseless. And so are cow, but cow's dolls, so big. Dragonflies and dragonflies. So how are y'all? I don't really worry about my cow. So I think me and Misty talked about we're actually going to try to put our Great Pyrenees over with them. I don't know if I'll put them in the net like Joel Southen does at Polyface, but I may still put them very close. And that way, hopefully, he'll kind of just watch it out. I don't she'll. know. Or, yeah, she'll. I, we're actually thinking about doing a double. Hey, doing a poly net. Our poly net is actually what's going to keep the sheep in. But I'm thinking we're going to go and wrap it around with uh with actually just like our cattle fences and try to have two forms of protection. Because we do have hey, some cows. Hey, cattle farms. Hey, Mindful um, Homestead. Have you I, said yeah, hey to all these people? Uh, well, hey, I've been Leatherwood. trying to as I see their names come across. Um, a ram sheet will hurt you, hurt you during your hunt. Yeah, yeah we Well, this is the way we feel on our homestead. Hey, we Lacey. have lots of males, um, whether it's r- from as small as a rooster all the way up to our Jersey What's boy. up, Jim? Hey, so, and, and males all in between because we feel like with everything that we do, we need a male to be sustainable. But we... This is our rule. Don't ever turn your back on a male. Yeah. For, don't, don't get right. comfortable with, with anything that's bigger than you anyway, because <laughs> they can hurt you. I mean, they're an animal. Right. But especially the males, um, it doesn't matter what they are. Like our so girls, that's our just kids. Our rules yeah. And our kids, here. we don't, we don't allow our kids in the, the fields with a lot of our bulls or a lot of our, our male animals. Um, Aiden will go in with the hogs just because he's feed them, but he usually, we usually get him to do kind of a free feed to one section just because we just don't trust them. Not, not that and our, what Colby means by that is he'll go to one corner and right. buckle them some food. So they're entertained. So he, then he can go in and get their water bucket and you know, whatever else he needs to I mean, do while he's in there. Just so that just like our, our bar, I mean, our, our bull, he is an angel. I mean, he, Daddy O is so sweet. I mean, he, he really is. But at the same time, you don't ever trust him. Just like with Misty or, or Aiden, I'm always telling them, don't turn your back on him because you just never know, especially like you said, it was in there in rut. So, uh, this, questions, some questions. Yeah. So uh, there was one question earlier. Stivers, the reason we went with sheep over goat, uh, we've never oh. been really goat folks. Um, we try Goats to do are things. very mischievous. They like to break out, get out. Well, for instance, on the way They're to the very, sheep, um, on the way to the sheep, we're we're driving to go to the sheep now. I mean, we're going to get the sheep, and there's, there's an older there's man an older gentleman with that a, lives down the road from these people in a cutover, and there is and they have goat wire fence. I he mean, bought. They said they told us that he bought about twenty four. Yeah, bought twenty four to Queensland. There's a goat with its head and two legs stuck out the fence and stuck in the fence as we pull by. Trying and to I'm get thinking, out. I'm thinking this is why a, we don't own goats. So we we just, just because we do a lot of temporary rotations, we don't like goats. Also, I've ate goat. I'm not just crazy about it. Um, other than our dog and our cat, we pretty much have everything that's sustainable that we can eat. Can eat. So we goats don't, just we not don't our favorite. really have anything on our farm that we consider a pet. Everything that we have either works for us or is food. So, for example, we have a cat. We have a cat because we've been told that it helps with snakes. As Patty told me this, it work, helps, really helps with snakes, really helps with um, squirrels and stuff like that. So, we got two cats, and I have not killed a snake since last spring or summer. I mean, it's yeah, been it's a while. while. We used to kill snakes every <laughs> like every, every month, weeks. every month at least. So everything that we have, we have, it's, we don't really view them as a pet. They, they work for us and we're good to all of our animals. I mean, we make sure that we take care of our, our animals, No but, offense to go but they're either, not, the they're, way. they're, we don't, we don't really have anything on our homestead that we consider. And, and another thing we, we need low maintenance pets too, or I say pets, low maintenance animals. A uh, goat's a little bit more high maintenance. And I know some of y'all are goat people, so I'm not telling, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir. But like she was doing, like for instance, what she said, Tell about she pigs. was she was actually having to uh, her farrier was coming in and trimming the goat hooves every every month. other month, every other month. I thought she said it was every uh, month. Every other month, and the sheep she was doing basically once or twice a year. So, 
I mean, not again. And, and see, for instance, another thing is we, we're we're sustainable, but at the same time we're we're all natural. So we try not to give any any supplements unless they're organic or non-GMO. So the sheep can do the same thing a goat can. They can cut through. They can clear the grass. They eat behind the cows. The cows and sheep will not share parasites. They actually can clean the ground up mm -hmm. from each other's parasites. Also, um, the goats. She was having to medicate a lot and worm a lot. Um, again, we don't worm our cows, so we're going to watch what we do with our sheep too. The main thing with sheep is you just can't give them anything with copper. They can't have copper, right. so you have to really so watch your feeds, so, all your minerals. So, in a nutshell, they're a lot more low maintenance. They're not as mischievous. Right. We and, need a charm snake. I mean, J &C. I guess cost cost they're about the same. I mean, I don't know. I guess cost they're about the same. Um. If you feed goats a lot of feed, you yeah. do have to trim their That's holes. what we heard, too. Yeah. So, yeah, she, hey, she, she just What's said, up, in comparison, um, it's so much more low maintenance. And, and they're taking care of elders in their lives and toddlers. So, they're taking care of, of like, a 91-year-old and a toddler in the day. So, she said that this three-year um, journey for her with the sheep has been so much better and we don't want jumpers like miss patty said that she may have two jumpers look i am not interested in chasing no goats around nowhere so now two things um these are these are hair on. sheep they're not wool sheep so right. we don't we, you know in the south <laughs> we're in zone ab we don't need wool sheep mm -hmm. they can make it here um one thing too is i saw another comment stivers um i have a buddy who has myotonic sheep uh, the faint goat or myotonic goat excuse me the faint goat their miniature, he has never had a problem. I mean, they, they, they've they tried to get out sometimes, but because they're so small, he's never had jumpers. He's never had to treat them. He actually feeds them Fruit Loops, which is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life, but that's their <laughs> treats. But he loves them. I mean, he absolutely loves his goats, and he wouldn't say, he would tell you nothing wrong with them at all. And he has about 50, I think. No, four, about 40 now. Um, so I, I guess whatever, what do you know, whatever. Whatever rubs you the right way. But, no, Miss Patty. Look, know. we have done this um, rotating our pigs. For y'all that have been watching our videos, have seen us rotate the pigs. These feeder pigs yeah, are sure. the smartest thing on our farm. And they have learned how to ground out the Premier One fencing. Because when it rains, they use the mud and push up against the fence. And they've learned that it grounds it out. I've chased enough pigs and I've chased enough chickens because if we, if we have, we've been rotating the chickens too. So if we have the smaller fence or they can get up on top of the coop, then they fly over the fence. So I'm done chasing stuff. I don't want to chase pigs and chickens anymore. And I don't need anything else that's going to get out for me, for me and Aiden to have to round back up. So I think the sheep will be good here. The only thing that I am probably most nervous about is predators um now they are going to be in hot fence but i guess if something is desperate enough to go through it hungry enough to go through it could be a problem um now colby had mentioned we have hattie may and she does an amazing job of keeping everything off the farm since we've had hattie may we've not had out we haven't had any attacks mm -hmm. Of anything, knock on wood, praise the Lord. But I will say that where the sheep are going to be, because it's so, um, it's so far away from the house, because that's where the best grass is. It's a wide open area. We can rotate them around in a beautiful place, but it's so far away from the house. I'm really nervous about something getting on. I mean, there's, it's only going to be two of them. We're going to have, have them a shelter and they're going to be in an electric fence. And we do have Hattie Mae, but it's still just, if you get something vicious, that's really hungry. It just makes me nervous. Serenity Meadow, we don't have a, a donkey. We actually laughed about, there was a, a donkey. We passed a little donkey farm too. <laughs> Cole, yeah. We said, I bet we can go there and get we one for free. We could probably just get one for free. <laughs> Here, man, people want to give you a donkey. They're like, please just take it. Chasing take animals it. is the best <laughs> home set dating exercise. You are so right. Look, now, let me go back and say I this. I actually though. almost, sl Aiden, I was telling you earlier about Aiden pulling those water hoses in the mud and because it's so muddy and Miss Patty can probably attest to this um 
slipping in the mud. But I was chasing the chickens and nearly slipped. And once I come back in, I was like, oh, I think I pulled something in my neck. What's so crazy is we we our cows are great. But we had one one idiotic cow or bull not too long ago. <sighs> that was the only animal that we actually had to chase in woods and all that. I mean, really, our pigs are all that. I don't know. Miss Patty's Peppa and George got out. When we yeah, but that's when they were, they, they were babies. Piglets. The first two days, they are probably but, the best thing on the farm now. But to be honest with you, um, we had to chase that steer. That steer is no longer with us. He's at a better place. Well, the bad thing about him is he just, he run the fence down. But see, here's what's even crazier. I actually, um, I broke my foot. I'm going to call him on real quick. Okay. I broke my foot chasing a calf um, or chasing Allie, Josie's, Josie, Allie's calf. So it's funny how the cows are the easiest thing to move and the easiest thing for us to keep in the fence. But that's been the hardest one every once in a while when they get moody. I don't know what it is, but it is pretty funny. Um, hey, Dawn, how are you? Yeah, we we talked about actually. There's a guy that was willing to give us um, a miniature donkey that not too long ago, and you know it's kind of like one of those things that I don't know if I need a donkey yet, just because our Great Pyrenees has done such a great job. Um, we actually the lady that we're buying the sheep from has some Tulus Goose too, which are non-flying geese. She's actually thinking about getting rid of a pair of those, so we may even grab those, put those in the permaculture chicken net, which is right next to the sheep. And that might even help, too, to kind of keep predators away. So we're going to play around with those before I just go ahead and buy a donkey. I just, <laughs> I just don't know if I want a donkey. I haven't figured out any other purpose other than just getting on my nerves. So, uh, But around here, you could pretty much pick them up for, for nothing. Uh, there was a guy the other day that was just willing to give me one. <laughs> awesome, Brett. That is cool. We actually have, we, we incubated uh as y'all saw last week uh the chicks and actually we have a whole nother hatchery of chicks in the incubator so there there's gonna be another 25 to 30 chicks coming out in, in the next few weeks or excuse me two weeks and then um, on top of that we actually have someone that's willing to give us some turkey eggs to try to incubate too so we're gonna try to have some little poults uh along with um along with our, our chicks so that's our goal so that's what we're planning on doing um i don't know who raises uh Meat birds, so we're fishing to order some more meat birds. Uh, I know Alderman Farms is who we ordered ours with last time, so probably in the first of March we're going to do that again. Try to order another set of meat birds and hopefully double our number. We're going to try to get around forty-five to fifty, uh, and hopefully I'll find some people that want to uh, do some butchering with us. But uh, we're going to really try to be sustainable with at least uh, fifty to a hundred birds for the whole year. So we have two, um, two basically two birds a week. Uh, our family can eat one at a sitting. So we really are hoping to get to doing 100 birds to make sure that we have enough for the year. So thank you, Serenity Meadows. Uh, we are glad that you're watching. Well, we can try to hatch out some, Miss uh, Miss Patty. We have uh, actually we have a lady we're hatching the next batch out for a whole uh, the whole batch is going to be for a, a person that actually ordered them from us. So uh, if you don't have olive eggers, olive eggers, the Easter eggers, olive eggers, Americanas, we've had every kind of chicken you can think of. They tend to be the most hardy. They're not a big chick or excuse me, big chicken, so they don't eat a lot. But their eggs are still as big as uh, any other eggs that we're getting even from our Jersey Giant. Jersey Giants have been a great chicken for us too. We are constantly having layers lay all season, no matter if it's raining or windy or nasty. They tend to lay pretty much all year. So I cannot say enough good things about the Jersey Giants, the Americanas, the Easter Eggers, and the Olive Eggers. Uh, hey, we'll see you later, Jim and I. Thank you for coming on. We will see you either next live or at uh, Deep South. Yeah, so... We have not talked about ducks too much for us. We do have some wild ducks and wood ducks that come into our pond, um, but we just hadn't ventured out on ducks. Everybody tells me how nasty they are, so we try to keep them away. We, we hadn't really thought about the ducks. We are doing the turkeys this year. Uh, we're going to do some double-breasted, or excuse me, broad-breasted uh, to put with our chickens to uh, butcher out, and then we're also going to get some heritage breed because we love the heritage breed, the, the, uh, the white chicken, I mean the white turkey. So that's what we're getting, going with, like a royal pond, something like that. Yes. Okay. So Missy, as y'all know, my grandmother's not doing too well. So she's checking on her. My mom called her. So she'll be back in just a second. Um, 
Now, so let's talk about the, the sheep, what we're going to do with the sheep. The sheep, the reason we wanted these sheep too, it is hard to find sheep uh, in our area. So we found a few sheep, but either they were either raised in a barn uh, or they were not native here, or we were going to have to travel pretty good distances. Uh, the reason we, we kept going back to this, this group of sheep was they were raised under a pine thicket, which is kind of where we live. Uh, and, and it's in a pine area. It has some fields and has some paddocks, but some of their paddocks will even go into this, like a civvy pasture right under the pine, and they're used to being out in the element. So we wanted a hardy sheep. They tend to be hardy. So um, I can't say enough good things about these Katahdin sheep. Uh, we were hoping for St. Croix because we heard that heritage breed is even stronger in some of the hot climates. Um, but we're going to try the Katahdin first. Um, the yeah, the breed, Mimsy, uh, the breeds that we have, I've had no issue with any of my chickens dying from the heat. Uh, we do have our hen house has one roof that is a shaded cover. So they have they have ways to walk right in the sun. But then at the same time, they have ways to go in the grass and eat the grass. But then they can come right back into the shade, have the dust bath and then go lay in the coop. We leave a light in our chicken coop the whole 24 hours, seven days a week. 365 days a year that helps them lay because that means their temperature in their hen house pretty much either is warm warmer or hot and they're used to that it never gets cold in their hen house and that tends to work uh, our permaculture chickens are you know they're in the, the basically the cluck wagon the cluck wagon does not have any um hay ridge life does not have any lighting system in it however uh they're pretty good layers they're not as strong as my hen house layers uh, but again that's some of my older hens too but I can't say enough good things about the Olive Eggers. That's probably my favorite ones in the Jersey Giants more than any other chicken that we've ever had. We've had the Orpingtons. Uh, they just tend to not, not do as well. We've had Bard Rock. They're beautiful. It's actually my favorite chicken to actually see. However, they've not been good layers for us. They've, they've been a very good layer from six months to about 18 months. But other than that, they just their laying cycle is not as good as some of the other ones we've had. So that's that's why we, we go with the ones we've, we've went with. Hey, Sonny's Place. What's going on, man? Hey, New Adventure. Yes, uh, Miss Patty, we will order again. If you want to order, we're going, uh, we'd love to probably place an order uh, probably in about three weeks, two to three weeks on um, some meat birds and also those turkey poults. So let us know if you want to order. We'll be glad to order with you. Hey, Church Family Farm. Hey, Kathy, how are you? So ha has anybody started a lot of starts in the greenhouse. Are they still planting winter? Are they planting spring? Uh, here we've got a potato video coming out. We've done potatoes and broccoli and onions and garlic, of course. But we've also started about 200 tomatoes and about 200 peppers. Our greenhouse stays very nice and warm. So we've been planting up a storm. But has anybody else planted a lot in their gardens for spring and summer? I don't know if y'all hear Sayla giggling. She's laughing with the girls. Uh, I got a question too. I have a video coming out on broccoli. We, our goal, we eat a lot of broccoli. The broccoli that we love to eat, of course, is, is just like anybody else. It's actually just a big head broccoli. But the last two years, I don't know if we're getting seed that's mixed up or what, but we're getting a lot of stem broccoli. Stem broccoli is cool. I like eating. I actually like stem broccoli. We eat the flowers, we eat the pods, we eat the greens, but you know, stem broccoli doesn't go as far as a big head broccoli. So I need to know a good brand. We've tried the Hulse, uh, Green Magic. Uh, we've tried the Walthall through my, in my gardener. What is your favorite broccoli too, by the way? So I want to ask you that question too. Awesome. It's awesome that you are, everybody's starting a lot of their seed starts. Perfect. Are y'all using solar cells or are y'all using uh, are y'all straight in the ground? Are y'all using soul blocks? How are y'all planting? Acadia broccoli from Hulse. Awesome. I, I did buy two different brands of Hulse broccoli this year. One was the Green Magic. I can't remember the other one. Uh, it was a heat tolerant broccoli, so it could be that one. I'll have to go back and look. Thank you for that, Mimsy. Yeah, we started a ton of peppers and uh, solo cups. Awesome, Kathy. That's cool. We do solo block. We do. Uh, uh, solo blocks. We do uh, solar uh, cells. Actually, our local uh, nursery here gave us about 10,000 solar 
cells that they can't use anymore. Uh, but we use a lot of solar block, uh, excuse me, soil blocks too. We love the soil blocks. They're harder to deal with, but they're so easy to plant. So that's why we like those too. Uh, we hadn't had cabbage worms this year. I, I've been real pleased with that. Actually, we have beautiful heads of cabbage that are growing now, and we are very pleased that they're actually coming around. So, I know, Miss Darlene, what's so funny is we actually, it, some of our videos, you know, we've got green grass showing, and, and uh, we have two viewers that's from, like, North Canada. And it's funny how both of them were like, are you crazy? I mean, it's still, like, 20, 20 degrees is the high up here, and we're, we're not planting mm -hmm. for another three or four, uh, probably at least for another two or three months. Some of their spring and summer stuff so that's crazy all right sorry y'all i had to take that phone call colby's grandmother is at his parents house and um i went to chat with her for a little while tonight we've been talking about what other people are growing and how they're growing some saying solo cups some are doing starter trays and grow lights you know we bought a grow light and we've never used it yet mm -hmm. We said we we're going to use it for a microgreen you know right i now. had heard the stivers mentioned and i'm not sure if they're still on here but I saw, I, I don't know if it was on her live or in one of her videos talking about using heaters in the greenhouse. And, you know, we have always used heaters in the greenhouse and never really had we'll any try to problems. Bring some, but um, she was saying that she, that she got ants. Uh, Jen was saying that she got ants in her greenhouse last year really bad. Thank you, TNS. This year, I, I don't know what, I, maybe it's from all the rain. I think it's that's the rain. running them in. I definitely think it's the rain. I went out there today, and in the moringa trees, the tomatoes that are down on the ground. Did you clean them up? No, I'm going to tell you what I did, though. I took some of the lemons off the lemon tree and cut them open and, and squeezed some lemon juice yeah. down in there. And I'm like hoping that that citrusy hey, busy little house. smell and that citric in there, it, it kind of didn't act like it bothered them. But I'm like, please run them off. Yeah, I think that's going to be our investment for next year. Um, we had never had any problems. Um, this is our what yeah, second Nancy. full year, or second and a half, two and a half two, years. Yeah, we're almost three years now. And I've never had ants in the greenhouse, but this is our wettest February By we far. have ever had. Borax. Okay, then I'm gonna we I can pick that up at Walmart. But yeah, I went in there today, and my moringa trees look so good. They're like this tall. And there's like ants all in them. And I thought. Oh, For us, it is definitely the weather. I mean, so it's just I crazy. squeezed lemon juice. I we our, My lemon tree is packed full of lemons. So I just took some off and broke them open. And Brett said ants got in hers all mm. last fall. I've never had any ants. Yeah, we've never had anything in the greenhouse. Ever. Like my greenhouse has been perfect. Yeah. But I, I had ants at, so, yeah, I, I think we're definitely going to invest in the heat mats next year when we need them. It's funny that it's, it's it, you know, and what's so crazy about Mississippi, we may, not, we may have a very dry next two or three months, but, man, it's been flooding lately. So Like constantly flooding. Hey, Wolves so. Head Forge and Farm, how are y'all? Yeah, so that's that's kind of the big thing for us. We hadn't had any issues. We don't have a lot of uh, insects. We've not really had insects in our raised beds so far for the winter, we've not had a lot of cabbage worms or anything like that. Not winter. Le the leaf-footed um, stink bugs were our issue last, last year. Spring. That's right. So hopefully we'll we'll get ahead of that this year too. Um, you know, the silage sharps has helped uh, on the gardens and starts. I think our start of garden this year will be a lot easier mm -hmm. uh, compared to last year. So I may just see what I really, us. really like yeah. the tarps. When we pull the tarps back, I mean, I just don't think you can get any more no. beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Between the pigs and the chickens mm -hmm. tilling it up, fertilizing it, us covering it back on up, covering it back up with the the tarps to keep the weeds and stuff out. Now I'm curious to know, with this being our first full year, how the weeds are gonna do this summer. So Well we We've, I'm curious to know how that's gonna go. In the south, we're so humid. So we're gonna have weeds. We know that. We know that there's no end all be all to get weeds out of a garden. However, I'm hoping this suppression with the silage tarps, with the animals doing natural teal, and with us doing a lasagna method, along with using a fire, um, a flamethrower, I'm hoping that makes a lot of difference. 
Uh, if we can prep it better, I'm hoping that gives us a better growing season to where we're not fighting weeds and bugs. We're fighting just one or the other uh, because it does. I mean, y'all know it gets hard trying to fight both along with trying to grow f- food. So uh, I'm re- we're really trying to get into a, not that we're trying to be a market gardener or a CSA, but we're really trying to get to the point where our garden does a lot more work for us than we have to do for it Right. by prepping it all throughout the year. I think that's given us a smart uh, Mimsy's garden said the guy from Edible Acres said that he thought the stink bugs is a soil issue. I don't know. But I hated them last year. Our, but our stink bugs really wasn't in, in our garden as much as it was on our fruit. Well, yeah. Well, it was tomatoes. Well, tomatoes. Yeah, tomatoes. Sorry. And our yeah. blueberries. But it's like they come in our blueberries toward the end of the season, like the first of June, middle of June, which we can pick blueberries here, like starting. <laughs> They're blooming. The middle of May to the end of May, I can pretty much get the majority of my blueberries. You know, I can still pick up until like the end of June, first of July. But the stink bugs last year, it's like the middle of June-ish, they just, bam, they come out of nowhere. I would go out in my flip-flops, and when I would see three or four or five in a pile, I would take my flip-flops and smash them. And I would just go around and just smash as many as I could. See, we love the okra. See, now, they didn't bother our right, okra. Now, last they were year we all didn't over have the, the tomatoes, but, but we didn't have the best okra harvest last year. We're still eating two okra from two years ago. That's we had mm-hmm. an unbelievable harvest two years ago. Last year we struggled. Um, it was the brain. It was yeah. the the seed. It was yeah, it's, a different. What do you call it? It's not. It's brand we variety. Went with a, yeah, we <laughs> went with. Me. A, uh, it was a, a variety that we didn't like. Yeah, it just was a harder for okra. I, we weren't pleased with it, so we, we're going back. I don't want to mention. <laughs> Where the seed came from, or what? what no kind of flip flops. Ask Anna why. For. <laughs> we actually, we still got a lot of tomatoes, but we should have got more than what we did. But we still got a ton of tomatoes, but I wish we would have got more. Yeah, and, and the problem was the the leaf footed stink bugs, and those little things are vicious looking little suckers. This year we've been we've been doing a lot too with again we I say this all the time, but we with us being an organic and, and non GMO garden style. It's so hard to figure out things. So, you, you know, it's so much easier just go buy stuff and dust and throw, dump on it. But we, we don't do that. So mm-hmm. we do a lot more fighting than we actually do. Um, it's like war. I mean, it's like a battle each and every day. But uh, I've been watching a well, lot of Hulse tools. Head, that don't sound good. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Hulse tools, of course. Hey, Walker Family Farm. Um, I think that with us doing a lot more of the uh, – Again, the weed suppression, I think that helps us to, to, to be family farm. straight up on uh, bugs. It, they've got some great organic herbicides. We're not sure yet on, on using them and a great uh, organic pesticide. So I'm hoping not to use anything, even if it's organic, just because I don't want to. But at least there's some things out there. But again, that's that's more money that we have to spend on gardens, which ultimately costs more for our, our vegetation. So we're trying to still stay away from that well and i so, honestly you know. i don't know how much chickens like blueberries and raspberries and <laughs> other kind of fruit no problem Welcome they by. really might hey, Broussard. but i had the idea the other day to leave like maybe one rooster in our fruit orchard just to eat the bugs off the ground um i think that Hopefully, the rooster won't be as interested in the fruit as if there's plenty of stuff on the ground for it. Um, so, I think that's going to be another way that we kind of utilize the no spray thing is and, to use. And I think that I think also what was kind of cool is I've been watching a lot of the no-till growers. Uh, if you follow their channel, they did an interview of a guy that was in um, in a very hot area in California, and he was doing you know companion planting like we've all done and perennial planting all along, but. He was doing what they call <coughs> alley planting. <Wow. laughs> he was doing like alley planting. So he was coming through there and planting just, I mean, gobs of marigolds and dill and, and basil. Where instead of, he was, instead of us doing like companion planting on the row, he was taking a section and making an alley out of it that was just full of just sacrificial perennials and sacrificial planting and sacrificial herbs to bring the bugs to one place. So I thought that was a kind of cool concept too that he was doing that versus us doing like companion planting oh planting my gosh, them on the road. I so. would be like, they're gonna breed and then all their babies are gonna <laughs> go out and attack everything. I don't know that I can do that. Um Mindy's garden. We use, we use said, D E and B T too. Pulse well. is organic pest control. 
we use Fertilome is a company that we use a lot of um, that has some organic Omri. Omri, Omri oh, I uh, thought this up here was pretty cool too. Certified. Southern Blessed Homestead said, I'm ready for the war this year. I have a gallon of aged onion, garlic, pepper juice to spray. Well, if they, that if, is awesome. If they live, they'll smell uh, pretty strong. <laughs> I actually used garlic in my garden last year, and it did help some. Another thing I was going to mention. We love Dale J and C. Another thing I was going to mention is I really, um, and I've been talking about this for years, but this year I'm doing it. Um, I want ladybugs. Yeah, we're going to have control. Um, I probably want two or three packages of them, which I know that's a whole lot of ladybugs, but we have a humongous garden area. So I feel like if we release some there, some in our raised beds, some in the greenhouse, that that will. Um, that's not good, JNC. That will really help. Now, hopefully the chickens won't eat them. Uh, Alderman Farms, we saw the one from last week that was at uh, Crystal Springs. Is there one? So I don't know about the one tomorrow, but uh -uh. If, we, if, we're going right out there. If it's on a Facebook post, please tag me in that. Yeah, because that, the one they had in some Crystal great deals. Springs, we had, and we already had something going on that morning, but the prices were amazing. Yeah, so if, but you, if you get a link I had to that, read Patty, let comments us know. on that post in Crystal Springs that said, um, the they were sold out like they opened at eight, but they were usually sold out by 745. And I was like, we really don't want to drive to Crystal Springs and put our family in a rush for no trees. So, um, yes, Miss Cecilia, you can order packages of ladybugs. I've been looking up baby ladybugs. Yes. And they are aphid destroyers. Also praying mantis, um, is something else. And I think that you can buy those. Um, so praying mantis are another. They're not going to harm any of your fruits or vegetables. They eat other bugs that eat your foods. So they're they're kind of like the ladybugs. Ladybugs feast off of aphids, which aphids um, will burrow into your plants and suck all the juices and, and goody stuff that feeds your plants. The aphids eat that. And I read that aphids do not have to be bred. When their mama has their eggs, which is kind of strange to me because I'm like, well, then would you ever need a male? But when the aphids lay their eggs, all of their females are born ready to lay. You know that? Okay. I read that. I don't know if it's true. So y'all don't quote me on that. But that's pretty stinky. So anyway. See you, MMZ. Thank you so much. Bye. Always. We will be seeing you in a few weeks. Yeah, so so that's been our kind of thing with uh, the bugs. Just trying to take over those few bugs. That's the main thing. So I think that's why we're going to do the ladybugs too. So place praying mantis are great for the garden. Yes, yes. Um, I hope those are things that we can add to our farm this year. As far as bug control goes, is ladybugs and praying mantis. Ladybugs for sure. I know I'm getting ladybugs, but praying mantis. They kind of freak me out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. If one gets on me, I might be crazy. She screams person. like a little sissy girl. I do. One day, <laughs> one day we were out between the raised beds, and y'all, this like monster worm crawled over my toe. Oh, you weren't out there. I was trying to record, and this monster worm crawled over my foot. I was in flip flops, and I like feel like crazy. <laughs> so, yeah, if one of those. If a praying mantis got on me, I might be like, it won't be good. <laughs> so here's, uh, again, we I know we're getting close to. eggs on our apple trees every year. Hey, that's awesome. Perfect. Thank you, Alderman Farms. Um, see, this year also, we, we've really, I've invested heavy in, um, of course, we used uh, fish emulsion last year. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's done great for us. We've got some just pelletized organic uh, fertilizer as well. We're also doing a lot of kelp seaweed this year as a spray on fertilizer that's fully organic, uh, OMRI listed. Um, so we're excited about trying to use that too. So we're, we're really trying to be as proactive as possible this year, being a lot more, I guess you could say, uh, be preemptive on everything and making sure we're on top of everything a little bit Dawn better. Don Golf said dead. I don't know if I would be dead or if the bug would be dead, but somebody's about to 
go down. <laughs> Bugs don't down. bother me that bad. Uh, I'm not a big spider Put person. Put a spider on him. I don't like spiders. Put a spider I'd, I'd on probably him. rather kill a snake than a spider. I can see a snake. I can I can get him. I've got stone spider. They just jump all over. And it hurts. Yeah, I just just the look of them freaks me out. <laughs> so if one got on me, I would die. <laughs> yeah, uh, Brett said. I would die. Look, I didn't know what it was. I glanced down and I saw it. And you know, they move like snakes. I glanced down. Y'all, I'm telling you, that sucker was huge. And I thought it was a baby snake when I first glanced down. But thankfully, it wasn't. It was just a worm. Hey, I don't like, I don't like spiders. I know spiders are good for the garden, too. Because um, they eat bugs. But I just Lizards, I have one or two lizards in my greenhouse. And I just leave them in there. But, hey, but if, if a doing, lizard gets on me, I'm going to be the same way. But if way, you're I'm doing silage tarps, if you're doing silage tarps, you will have you will take your salad tarp off and you're gonna see a ton of crickets, you're gonna see a ton of spiders, and you're gonna see a ton of earthworms. Hey, Miss Arlene, that's something that has become pretty popular around here is community gardens. Mm -hmm. We actually had one in our downtown last year yeah. that um a friend of ours would um come to the farmers market and talk to us a lot about it. And he was kind of over that, was he not? Yeah, he was. And um they did really, really good. Um, so we, th that's a great idea is to do community gardens for people who can't maintain a whole garden by themselves or maybe have a spouse that is not interested, but they want to do it. Um, a community garden is, is an amazing thing. Um, so for somebody maybe who has low land, not who, place. who a, a garden is not good because a, a garden can be somewhat low but if it stays wet your roots are going to rot um or somebody that can afford to start off or you know whatever there's so many good things about a community garden so that's that's awesome that your church is doing that yeah i think ours is going to get bigger this year we don't again it's so hard for us to participate because we got all the gardens we have here but it did really well here so hey blondie <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, roaches. I ain't doing roaches either. If it's got more than a few legs, don't put it around <laughs> me. <laughs> I've yet to find out a purpose for a roach. I'm Miss not, Patty not said, "Give me a spider over a snake any day." I, now, I'm not saying I, I want know. a snake hanging out in my house, but at the same time, uh, I just don't. I just don't like spiders. I'm not. A I've spider had a spider. I've had spiders crawl over my feet when I wear flip flops. Used to <sighs> freak out, but I'm good with them now. No. Oh, y'all hear me screaming all over the place. Um, I saw, oh, battling a snowstorm. Who did crazy. I see? The busy little house. It is absolutely freezing here, but we are not having snow. So. Absolutely freezing. It's like 34. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, that's absolutely like, freezing wait. to us because this morning it was, it was like, like 70. 60, yeah, I had like air in the going. Upper 60s. <laughs> I had air going yesterday. We had a. I don't know what a orb. orb. Weaver. I don't know what a orb on our goat house last summer. Her egg sack is still in there. I wonder when they'll hatch. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna let you keep that one. Yeah, it's a very cold to our southerns. Like, I, I, like thinking about uh, deep south last year. <laughs> she said freezing, lol. <laughs> Look, it is. I went out in my insulated overalls today with. This sweater on and a jacket. Hey, Blondie. Oh, you, you are from Jackson. Yeah. So you're, you, you okay. know our temperature. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, that's like for us. See, this morning, yep. it's cold and rainy. And I'm thinking, and then it warmed up. We had the sun come out. And I was like, oh, well, it's going to warm up for the day. And then all of a sudden, it just started just incrementally dropping. Right. All day. Well, and the wind kind of, like she said, and then the wind kind of blew it in because. Yeah. Our, okay, Broussard. I'm sorry. I know of us banana spiders. Our, um, our, um, table out back our iron table out back blew over today yeah Have i saw that it? yeah i need to get that up it's just i'm just like i i, I have a monitor in our room we have a security camera uh and it just kind of looks at our farm and uh <laughs> every morning i get up at four see if it's right and i just look and all of a sudden i see it raining I'm just like man can i just not go up this morning <laughs> Uh, every morning that's not raining now I from Mississippi, like I'm just thinking, oh, snakes, that's great. That's what it takes. Love me. Oh, that's a song. <laughs> oh, yes. Cure the greenhouse. I almost went out and did some road covers tonight, but it's not supposed to get crazy hey, cold. 
it's supposed to just get just a little cold tonight. So we're not going to, it's supposed to warm back up tomorrow. So I'm not going to worry about trying to cover our stuff tonight. Yeah, I'll be, what was that? Our greenhouse that? stays pretty warm too. We, we keep it we keep closed the heaters up. on that yeah. has attracted the ants. But my year. goodness, it was like sweating up in there the other day. Snowing in Kentucky. <laughs> it's freezing here. Well, it's not under 32, but it's freezing to us, but it's not snowing. Freedom, when you come to South Mississippi, we'll show you some green grass. We'll show you some high temperature. So you're not far from them. <laughs> yeah, the, well, like two days ago, we had like short sleeve outside. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was like 60 something. It was, it yeah. was in the mid 60s, this mid to upper 60s this morning. And then it just went to absolutely freezing cold. The cold wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't so bad. Hey, That's right. Man. Amen. If it if we didn't have to deal with the um, if we didn't have to deal with the wetness, I could deal with coldness all the time. <laughs> all right, are you about ready to wrap yes. up? We are at our hour. Hey, Harnack Farms! Again, thank you for coming on. <laughs> thank y'all for coming on. It was a great live. We always love talking to so many of you, and we're so excited to uh, to um. Always get on. Wednesday nights are always fun. Alderman, what? are y'all coming to Deep South? Yeah, of course they're going to Deep South. Well, she said see y'all next month, so I'm assuming they are. Yeah. But thank y'all so much for watching tonight. Thank you for hanging out with us. It's always fun talking about the new stuff that's going on. We've got uh, we've got another calf that's hopefully being born. I know y'all don't see a lot of our big cows up at our other farm, but we have two of those that's supposed to have babies in April, so they're coming up too. Uh, the piglets are coming up. The sheep are coming up. We actually have too much content for all the videos. We actually don't get enough videos out because we have too much content. So I'm sorry. We're trying to get as much as we can out real quick. We're actually, what, like a week behind? <laughs> yeah, we're like a week behind. So we're trying our hardest. Uh, it's funny because I hear a lot of people say, I don't know if I have Yay. enough content. We might just be boring, but we have a ton of content. So we're always trying to put it out as quick as possible. So we're excited about the new sheet, um, but it will be an adventure. A little, little nervous. nerve wracking. A little nervous. <laughs> but we are excited. They're really, really cute, especially the two smallest ones. They are precious. But so we're excited. Our first two are coming Friday. Yay. And then we'll get our our other two um in in several weeks. Yeah, about so. three weeks. So so we're excited. So thank y'all so much for watching. And uh God bless you. Happy homesteading, y'all. Happy homesteading, y'all.